Hey guys, it's Hans Hobbies, and this is a review of the Latrax Teton. This is a four-wheel drive, 118th scale monster truck. You can get for around $130, $140, depending on where you get it. Now, the Latrax line, um, Latrax is a sub-brand of Traxxas, and they have been around for a very, very long time. I believe even before Traxxas. Um, they originally made a bunch of like RC Arnold cars in the late 70s, early 80s, I believe. Um, but after after that, they really fell off and really you didn't hear about Latrax for a very long time until this modern version came out. A fun fact about Latrax though, uh, evi uh, supposedly they are the ones that pioneered the pistol grip style radio for RC. So I guess we have them to thank for that. But speaking of the radio, before we get into the truck real quick, I want to get some of the boring stuff out of the way. The radio it comes with is a the same TQ radio that comes with all the Traxxas vehicles so nothing really fancy there only thing that's different is obviously the stickers and the wheel is no longer chrome um the car also comes with a battery a six cell nickel metal hydride battery pack uh, it's the same one that, that the 16th scale Traxxas line uses as well as a charger um, a wall charger this time with the led light it's a very slow charger but it does work for people that need one um, and finally, we can talk about the, the Teton. So the Teton is the most expensive out of the three Latrax vehicles. It's available as the Rally, which is the on-road vehicle, friction shocks, bushings, plastic gears, um, shorter on-road suspension. Um, and it's also available as the Pre-Runner, which is the exact same thing as this. So it has ball bearings, oil shocks, off-road, longer off-road suspension, um, tougher bumpers, um, metal gears. So they're basically the same. The Teton is more expensive because it includes the larger wheels and tires. Um, and that's basically the only reason it's more expensive. It's only a $10 uptick in price though. So um, if you're not super into the monster truck look or absolutely need to have a monster truck, you can easily get the uh, pre-runner and have the basically the same truck uh, with just smaller wheels and tires and a larger body. But speaking of the body, the color of these Latrax and Trax vehicles in general tend to change very often, so I can't really comment on that. But the version I have is this nice gunmetal blue and white version. I really like the look of this paint scheme. Trax just does really nice graphics on their bodies. Also, it's very unique in the RC monster truck um, world because it is an SUV style body. SUV style bodies are usually not very co um, common on RC monster trucks because it makes the rear body post a lot more vulnerable. Um, when you crash, it's going to grind down your body post up here. And also since it's longer in the back, it has a tendency to break a lot easier. Um, Traxxas has thought of that a bit though. So they give you a lot extra meat on top of these posts where the holes are. So it will have to be ground down pretty far before you actually um, wear them down. You can see how much meat there is right there. The body clips that this thing uses are these smaller mini sized body clips. So if you lose these, you have to get smaller ones. So just keep that in mind. The wheels and tires are also very nice. Um, they're just air filled, no foam inserts. Um, they're decently soft, not soft and compound, just soft because probably they're, cause they're thin. Um, the tires are also not glued onto the wheels for some reason. They're just, they're just, they just have a really thick bead to it. So if you want to, you should glue those, especially if you're running more power. The wheels look very nice and they're really durable. And I just really overall like the look of these wheels and tires. The wheels are held on with a 2.5 millimeter flanged and serrated screw. So um, it should keep that wheel on there nice and tight. And it's a nice beefy um, hex um, size for the wheel nut. So that's very nice to see. The bumpers front and rear are different and they are flexible enough to not break, but stiff enough to support itself. So that's also very good to see. The body is polycarbonate. It is very thin though. So uh, take for that what you will. You may want to sure this up with some duct tape or shugu or something um, if you plan on doing some hard, hard dashing. But taking the body off, you can see it is based on a on-road chassis. As I mentioned, the rally is based on the same thing. The good thing about that is it is a very low center of gravity and it's a very traditional um, four wheel drive setup. So it, it should be pretty easy to work on. Um, and you can see the suspension here. 
the thing that Traxxas did right with this is um, even though it's based on an on-road chassis, they set up the suspension very, very well. It's engineered very nicely. So it has a nice range of suspension travel. Um, it also has plenty of droop in the suspension. So that's also very nice. A lot of uh, suspensions tend to not have enough droop. So just they just tend to come up like that. Um, and the shocks are one of the best shocks I've ever seen on an RTR vehicle. They're set up very nicely. The spring rate, the oil, they're just very smooth and very nice. I'm dropping it like this. You can see, you can barely see the suspension working, uh, which is a good thing. And when I pick it up, you see there's still plenty of droop there. So very nice setup on the suspension. Very, very happy with that. Um, everything else on this is plastic. Uh, so the shocks themselves are also plastic. Shock tower, chassis, all the links are plastic. The drive shafts are plastic. The only part that is metal on this is obviously the pinion gear for the motor. The center drive shaft is metal. Um, and the diff gears and all the gears in the diff are metal. So the electronics that it comes with are the same ones that Traxxas vehicles come with, the mini ones. So it's the same XL 2.5 style, just rebranded. Has training mode, lipo cutoff, all that good stuff. Traxxas connector, obviously. Um, waterproof receiver box here that houses your Traxxas receiver. A The same battery, as I mentioned, as the Traxxas um, 116th scale line. The one you'll get with this truck will actually say Latrax on it, but I just have happened to have the Traxxas one in here at the moment. The battery tray, it's also very easy to use. The clip is just one body clip and it just slides off like that. Um, and it's very easy to clip on. Just line it up with those little two tabs in the inside there. And they just slide on and keeps the battery nice and secure. So that's very good. On the other side, we see the motor and servo. The servo is a mini size servo. I will talk about that later. Um, and the motor is a 370 size motor, so a little bit smaller than typical 118th scale vehicles, so a little bit proprietary in the motor there. So you will have to do some modification to the motor mount and stuff if you want to upgrade it to a typical 380 size motor. Um, so that is unfortunate, but at least it does connect into traditional um, bullet connectors. So as long as you do the mechanical changes, the connection should still work fine. So that's a lot of rambling about the car on the desk. I'm sure you guys want to see how this thing drives. So let's take this out and see how it runs. So starting off driving on an on-road surface, you can see the truck is very peppy and accelerates very fast. Um, it's objectively not that fast, but again, like a lot of the mini cars I review, because the car is so small and the car is also very responsive to your, to your throttle input and control input, it feels a lot faster than it is. And even though it has, it is running a tiny 370 size motor, which is even small for 18th scale terms, and a 6L nickel metal hydride battery pack, it's more than enough to get this thing up and running, um, enough to uh, make, have it power, power up curbs and do jumps, and just be a really exciting truck to drive, even on a relatively small area and a relatively flat surface like this. Um, here I'm doing a bunch of uh, bashing with it on, on this little curb corner right here of this parking lot and it, it stood up pretty well um, durability wise and just handling wise it's just well, it's a lot of fun to drive I will talk a little bit more about durability in, in a second because um, the truck as you see it right here is actually not stock so I will talk about durability a little bit later but overall performance on road and on just a parking lot bashing surface uh, very good I'm really happy with the way this thing drives um, on this on this surface On a more uh, off-road surface, here we have uh, a relatively rough surface as far as these tiny little cars go. Um, and the suspension, like I mentioned earlier, is very well tuned and very well set up. So it's able to soak up all the bumps really well. It's not really bouncing around as much as a lot of other it's tiny, small-scale RC cars do. And also on top of that would be low center of gravity. Um, the car is able to go over the rough terrain without much fuss. And again, that tiny motor and, ba and battery produces enough power so the truck can go pretty close to full speed, um, not getting bogged down at all, even on an off-road surface, a bunch of leaves and sticks and patches of grass and stuff. So even off-road, I'm more than happy with the performance with this thing. Um, and uh, Traxxas is 
really living up to their uh, living up to their reputation for producing pretty high performing vehicles as as far as uh, bashers are are concerned. Now I mentioned durability earlier, uh, and here's a nice little segue. The arms on the Latrax Teton are these little arms, they're the same ones that's on the pre-runner version. And they're made out of a pretty, they're, they're supposed to be a pretty flexible plastic, but you can see some of them are really brittle. So the, the uh, quality of the arms don't seem like they're very consistent. Some of them have enough flex and give to them where they will be plenty durable, but some of them are just far too brittle. You can see how sharp that corner is right there where it broke. And it was just in, on on one uh, one hit to the A arm, uh, to a uh, the, on the ground on the jump, and it just absolutely shattered. Uh, even cut up a couple of the other arms to see if I could replicate it, and another arm was just as brittle. So you can see here, I put all RPM arms on it. Um, they are they come in pairs, so if you want to replace all of them, you have to get two of them. But after putting the RPM arms, you can see the RPM arms are a lot more beefy. Um, I didn't really have any other. Um, Durability issues with it, uh, chassis-wise, mechanically like that. Um, I did have to replace the servo. Uh, I think I mentioned that earlier. If I didn't, um, yeah, the servo also stripped out, so I did replace it with the Savox servo. But driving it again, um, this time I'm on the off-road track again, uh, jumping it on this little dirt mound here. And again, with the with the decent power that this thing has and the very well-tuned suspension, it jumps very well. Uh, the low center of gravity also helps it jump pretty level in the air. Um, so it jumps really well, lands the jump really well, and it's fun even on this uh, tent scale uh, track surface. Um, just just bashing it around, a lot of fun to drive. Uh, another note I do have to make though is on this particular run, I did burn out my motor, um, and the diffs also went out eventually. So the diffs on this don't seem like, even though they are metal, they don't seem like they are the highest quality diffs. So that's something you want to be careful of. You also want to be very careful of the temperatures of your of your uh, motor. You really want to let it cool down completely before you switch out the battery pack and go for another run because the tiny motor really isn't big enough for um, this truck and I feel like it's geared a little high for that higher performance. So the motor is something you want to watch out for. The gears are also something you want to watch out for. And of course the servo is going to strip out and the arms also broke from you. So even though overall it's very High performing vehicle it hasn't been the most reliable vehicle for me so that's a little bit unfortunate you saw back there i splashed around the water a little bit fortunately the the tracks electronics are still pretty decent so the waterproofing is excellent um, but yeah not the most reliable truck mechanically for me um, but nonetheless it was a lot of fun to drive and if you're willing to put a, a bit more money into it and you really don't want to get a bigger car uh, and you really want to stay with this small scale stuff or you want something for your kid to drive around or something like that and you don't mind putting some money into it um, this is probably a good truck to have it's very fun to drive uh, performs very well you're just gonna be have, you're just gonna have to be a little bit more mindful about uh, some of the mechanical uh, reliability of this little truck but overall um, pretty decent truck I, I personally wouldn't recommend this, but a lot of people do enjoy it. And if you enjoyed this review, um, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.